and we are recording. We're back. We are working on a stor short story because we want to put together a uh, short story collection that uh, rounds up different, uh, different little nuggets and moments from the Chaos Nova universe. Some of them will concern uh, the characters who will pop up in other stories. Some of them, I, I would say that some of the short stories will actually become part of longer books at some point, won't they? Mm -hmm. This one probably, yep. I, I don't know, this one is a standalone, I think. Yep. Yep. The um, one that, technically the one that follows on from this is Mirror's Legion, but okay. I haven't written that yet, so. <laughs> Well, I ha I have attempted to write it several ah, times, ah. but we will talk about that when we come to that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. We will Sorry, examine that crater when we, when we get to it. Indeed. <laughs> um. So yeah, shall I just carry on? Yes, carry on reading. Scribe stepped out from the desk and sheathed his spear. He approached sixteen with his hands raised. I don't know about you specifically, but thousands have disappeared from around Bayema recently. Convoys never returning, ships found drifting without their, tru their crews. If you're related to that, then I need to get into that facility. What are you hoping to find? A list of names would be a good start. We didn't have names. Just numbers. Scribe nodded. I, I get that, but perhaps the computers will reveal more. Sixteen looked thoughtful for a moment, then nodded. Very well, Scribe. I will act as your guide, and in return, you will escort me to a safe place. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I can immediately inject a, a better, uh, better dialogue here. So, okay, all in all, I think that this, uh, uh, this uh, exchange uh, will, will need the same work as the exchange before that, as in, mm -hmm. it needs refocusing and it needs some restructuring. However, for this last sentence, uh, or the the pact of the sto of this uh, story, I think I can give you uh, this line. Very well, data. Uh, very well, jockey. Mm. I shall get you in here if you will get me out of here afterwards. Yeah. Ah, uh, keyboard, what the fuck? Yeah. And it, it can... I think it's uh, it's not uh, it's not the clean version, of course. It could be something like, I will get you in that door if you will get me off this planet later. Are they in a planet or are they in a station? Where, they are, where are they? Uh, station oh, okay. that could be part of a planet or a moon or something like okay. that. You know, it's, I didn't really give the location much thought. Other than Codex can land there and Scribe can make his way through a sort of openish area. I like that though. It's uh, uh, just shortly before I read the last two sentences of this paragraph, Scribe agrees to this far too quickly. Because Scribe's like an appropriate agreement. <laughs> yeah. And so so basically, that's that's one thing that I wanted to point out with these uh, dialogue bits is that there's a lot of talking. But with all that talking, the decisions actually come sort of like, oh, yeah, let's do that. Oh, yeah. you do that, you do that. So, so the, uh, the task with, the, with this scene, or like, I think the task with this whole scene where Scribe and Sixteen are talking when they are already aware of each other, or like, let's say the scene from where they discover, when they discover each other to the point where they... Uh, agree to work together uh, there will have to be the build up to each uh, decision so like, mm -hmm. how do they get to the point that uh, that they agree to show each other without killing each other mm. how do they get to the point that uh, they identify who either of them are how do they get to the point where Scribe uh, uh, reveals what he's after and how did they get to the point that Scribe agrees to uh, uh, agrees to the uh, to this uh, arrangement? So it's like four 
four specific goals actually. Another thing is this, uh, it's all very disjointed uh, conversations. They're a bit all over the place and then they come to these, these points mm -hmm. and then it's like, right, well, we'll do that then. And there's not really, there's a lot of, I think it's exposition. I think mm -hmm. when Scribe is explaining to 16 about the whole thousands have disappeared from around Bayama, yeah, the geezer probably doesn't remember all that, but it's just a way for me to tell the reader, hey, this links into something bigger, <laughs> uh, yeah, which so is it's, very so it's, bad. Uh, yeah, so it's like point one, we take the scene and we identify what are these key points, and then mm -hmm. we identify how the characters get to these key points, and then we fill in how they, what they say while getting to these key points. So, for example, this, uh, uh, the whole <laughs> what info the scribe is after could be more like uh, more like he is reluctantly he's like he's giving partial partial info and he's saying like mm, I'm looking I'm looking into something people have been dis disappearing people disappear every day that, that's nothing special well this time it's different different how you know that that sort of thing I love that that's great <laughs> already edited down into much more refined material. Nice job. Um, or, like, or like, this time it's personal, somehow, because of reasons. Maybe it's not personal, but... <laughs> or we'll like, this, this, is, this is different. They are, they are disappearing in, num in great numbers or something. This, uh, okay, right, massive tangent up ahead, and <laughs> this is hugely spoilerific territory. The reclaimers around Bayema are some massive conflict point. They get mentioned in Kimberland's Duty, they get mentioned in this, they get mentioned in Mirror's Legion, Caldevars are taking flight, the works. There's, it's a very big thing that's going on there. And I think with this story, and Mirror's Legion and Caldevars especially, I was trying to force this event or this big thing in into these stories because it's one of the f the grounding points I've got. Like it's like mm. the uh, smugglers' run, for example. Like that's a grounding point within the universe. I know I want to hit that note unless something better comes up. Like unless something much better comes up. Um, and actually, we've discussed the smugglers' run and we've come up with quite a few alterations that make it better. Mm. So. That's what I want to happen, but especially in the case of Caldevarza and in this, I like referencing other shit that's going on in the universe, but in this instance, in this instance with Scribe, it makes sense. that This is directly related to the stuff he's researching, but in Caldevarza, people are going missing from the station on transports and convoys and stuff like that, and that also relates to the reclaimers around Bayama. And the reason Mirror's Legion get contracted to do the shit that they get contracted to do is nothing to do with the Reclaimers until Scribe brings them on board to talk about it. Um, and in the case of Taking Flight, Zhao is like, those guys around Bayama, they have got something to do with the guys around Tucker 9. So it, it's all very forced and crowbarred in at this point. Uh. Yeah, so basically you, you will have to find a way to actually connect these things instead of cramming them together. Mm -hmm. So there, there, has to be, there has to be the logical background connection going on instead of just saying, oh, shit's happening at that place. <laughs> That's important. Yeah. There will be a test later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to cut that shit out immediately. Okay, in certain instances it works. Caldevarza do a lot of investigating to come to the conclusion that they come to. And yes, I know Caldevarza isn't canon in any sense of the word. It's just mm -hmm. it was just a nice fun jaunt. Um, but um, they go through a lot of investigation and that sort of thing. Mirrors Legion are brought in via Scribe, so I don't feel so bad about that. And then with the Alexis and taking flight, that's that's a real stretch. That one, like mm -hmm. oh, there are odd reclaimers in Bayama. Therefore, they must be linked to the reclaimers that attacked you on Tucker 9. Therefore, link. You know, that's that's appalling. Even with <laughs> connections, that's not something that he can pull off. 
Yeah, uh, I mean, <clears throat> things that are happening far away from each other, there could they can still be linked uh, through a person, like a person who researches it. Like in in Expanse, uh, the series. I haven't read the book yet. Like in uh, as in in Expanse, uh, the whatever that that station is where where everybody lives wh or where the builders live. And mm -hmm. uh, and what's happened uh, with the whatever that uh, that ship was called, those were linked uh, through Miller, who was researching uh, Julie Mao. Mm -hmm. So, shit far apart from each other shouldn't have anything to do with each other, but he was researching it, and so it became it became their business. Yeah. I mean, in that in that case, uh, the. Uh, the shared distance was of course uh, s smaller than in our case like we are speaking of different uh, different star systems different uh, human civilizations not uh, uh, mm -hmm. not different factions within one system etc and now that, now that I think of it Julie Mao actually had an apartment in the in the station where Miller lived but still <laughs> <laughs> but 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 still uh, the whole the whole plot got uh, uh, got going because this one guy was asked to look into that one thing over there. That's an excellent point. Uh, just quickly, while we're talking about the expense, how <laughs> many episodes have you seen, and are you enjoying it so far? Oh, I I watched two seasons. Oh, I haven't seen the second season yet. So you're ahead Ooh. of me. Nice. Yeah, I, I I actually like the second season better because uh, that's where the cast has already sort of worked themselves in and like uh, I I think I've said that that I, I sort of you can recognize it's that it's good from the very start, but I didn't uh, I didn't uh, begin enjoying it until like five episodes in. <laughs> we can talk now about that bit in the book. I think you know the bit I'm talking about, where they're in the, where they've been captured, this is season one, obviously, they've been sort of captured by the Mars, uh, the Martians, mm -hmm. uh, the military, mm -hmm. and they're in that, in that room, and mm -hmm. in the book, the guy gets his head clean taken off, there's a hole in the wall, all that stuff, and they patch it up, and I didn't think they were going to include that in the TV series, because oh. that fucking super, gra in the book, it's super graphic, right? Mm -hmm. In the TV show, they pulled it off flawlessly. The yep. whole and the gravity situation, the pressure, everything—it was oh man, they nailed that a thousand percent. And <laughs> it was it was stuff like that that made me sit up and take notice of of the expense. They've they've done a really good job. <laughs> and Miller is fantastic. I love Miller. He's great. Mm. He is so good. <laughs> He's the he's he's that smart ass detective. I I think that's what I like about him. Oh okay yeah. To for me that that's a little bit boring. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Yeah no I like I like the smart ass detective characters like the book that um Cole's writing. Uh, I, he seems a bit of a smart ass. I like him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. Expense is great. Uh, I definitely need to watch the second season. I think are they not already on? Oh, are they filming season three? Possibly, maybe. Uh, could be. I think se uh, season three was confirmed at least a few months mm. ago. I think, but I don't know if they're already working on it. Oh me. Yeah, great series. Um, where were we? What were we doing? Where uh, am I? <laughs> different locations, far apart. Uh, what's the connection? Mm -hmm. And uh, and my point was that uh, they could be connected by by a person or a person's interest or or a faction's interest. There's a section when Zhao and Trouble are having a conversation in Zhao's office, and they're talking about Scrap Heap, which is the name that Corey gave to the Arabian ship after like in one of the chapters he's basically like he doesn't say this phrase but he's basically like call a spade a spade right it, it's a pile of junk we probably get less questions this way if we just admit it <laughs> and uh, anyway that's his logic behind it 
And later on, Zhao and Trouble are having a conversation about Scrap Heap. And the way that Zhao links Bayema and the Reclaimers there to Tucker 9 is the fact that Bayema is closer to Arabia space, which is why they were more likely to get their hands on an Arabian ship and crash it into Tucker 9, which was that's, his logic that, behind that. That's, that's not a real connection. No. This is, this, is, it, this is just you telling that there is a connection. Yeah, it's false. And this is the sort of stuff that we need to uh, fix. Yeah, so, so basically uh, when I say that uh, places different places far apart can be linked through a person or an, or an action or a mission it means that the character actually needs to do something that links those places not not just the name drop so okay. name, name drops don't count <laughs> <All right. coughs> I'll be happy when I'm rid of this cold I'll tell you that for nothing <laughs> oh man I sh shall I continue? let's try to work a little bit more on this one yes Okay. Um, okay, so uh, th let's try it with the new one. Oh, hang on. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me. I'm I'm very sorry to all the glorious and beautiful listeners, and I'm sure they are all very beautiful. <laughs> okay. Very well, jockey. I shall get you in if you get me out of here afterwards. An appropriate agreement. I am glad you agree. Please follow me. A scribe accompanied Sixteen through the labyrinthian walkways and roads. They passed by shops and other businesses. Just a second. Mm -hmm. It just occurred to me that uh, how or or like let's make it let's make it a an explicit point of how how does the Sixteen actually how does he even know uh, how to get in there? So why why would he know this facility if he's it's the one he escaped from. Okay, so basically, this is this is not at all clear at this point. Okay. It is not. It is not at all clear that he has come out of that place. So, uh, I think one important thing to uh, uh, to make clear here is that when the two guys meet in the whatever area they meet in, uh, then. Basically, 16's escape is interjected by uh, the scribe's arrival. So this is important. This is like this is like the whole the whole point of the thing. <laughs> mm. So this this has to. That's I think we have found the main focal point for uh, for their exchange. And that's some and and during that exchange, then 16 will figure out that. Uh, uh, that maybe they may maybe this can be beneficial. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me just write this down. And this, if this is the focal point, uh, that uh, his escape is interjected or or is sort of interrupted by a scribe's arrival, this also uh, determines or this also dictates certain key points that they have to go through. So it's like basically, a scribe is on his way. Or, or like scribe is on 16's way so in the immediate sense he would want him uh, 16 would want the scribe to be gone or to to be away from his way so that he can escape mm -hmm. and maybe initially uh, he has figured out that oh somebody has arrived here on a ship uh, I will dispose of this person and take their ship and escape myself. So maybe initially the maybe initially sixteen try, uh, wants to murder uh, the scribe, and then the their exchange will have to lead to the different kind of uh, uh, interaction. There. Interaction. <laughs> <laughs> Pow. Yeah, and so uh, the whole point that please follow me 
this is like uh, this is like the conclusion of uh, of that whole scene. Mm. And now we begin a new sequence where sixteen guides uh, the scribe through the facility. Carry on. Yep. A scribe accompanied sixteen through the labyrinthian walkways and roads. They passed by shops and other businesses. What happened to the people who ran these? What people? I don't follow. Sixteen didn't reply until they came to another shop. He stopped outside and raised his hands to the window. There's nothing in there. Scribe frowned and glanced inside. Sixteen had been right. Nothing but an empty room. Abandoned or never inhabited? I don't have those answers. Scribe shook his head. Sorry, I was thinking out loud. He straightened up and motioned for Sixteen to lead on. Okay, one point about this uh, exchange. Uh, if we establish earlier that Scribe already suspects that something is not right about this place, that it has the layout of a settlement but uh, but other readouts don't match it, then maybe his questions should also be a little bit different. Like, uh, he's not surprised to discover that uh, that there are no people there but uh, but he would want to know why okay all right cool Carry on? Mm hmm Okay. What about the others? Like you? I helped those who wanted to leave. The others fault. Could you have left too? Sixteen nodded. I could, but I chose not to. I felt compelled to put an end to this. How many made it out? Six. His answer came with an assurance. They had no desire to assist me. Yet they made no effort to stop me. They suffered as I had. I didn't want that to continue. Do you know where they went? Sixteen shook his head. I do not. Uh, I would cut this whole thing. Yeah? <laughs> it's like... L lots of talk, but... Uh, I don't know. It just... It doesn't lead doesn't anywhere. Act doesn't add it add anything to the story yeah 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 so so or, or like this together with the previous exchange like what does it answer i think this was me covering my ass to be like hey this leads on to something bigger in the future mm. oh, maybe we can find those six people but in this context of the short story it doesn't help or lead on to anything so yeah, yeah. I, so, you're so, right cut it so basically what they're doing right now is they are moving into the facility they are examining uh, their surroundings or at least scribe is mm -hmm. he might ask some uh, uh, topical questions but Here's the thing, like whatever shit went down in this place, that's not really his concern. He wants to, he needs to get to the data. Mm -hmm. So while he might, uh, while he might be curious about certain things, or or he might be curious, he, he might need to ask about certain things that uh, that immediately concern his mission. We have to remember that he has his mission. Or like he he didn't just come here to to chat and uh, <laughs> spew exposition. He came he came here to retrieve certain data. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't got that focus. I don't think. Mm -hmm. So I would I would mark this uh, this whole exchange as very iffy, and let's let's see uh, what points here are worth salvaging, if any. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, as I understand, you want to link this thing, like the thing that happened in this place. You want to link this to the data that the scribe is after. Yeah. So basically, at some point, he would have to figure out that his mission and what happened here are related. But until he knows that, or until he he sees that, he has no he has no reason to uh, to show excessive in, uh, excessive interest uh, to this place. Think of it, and and let me give you a very practical. Uh, pointer why why it would th why it would be this way <laughs> so tan tangential example uh, the classical uh, Sherlock Holmes uh, dialogue goes like this that uh, Watson discovers that Holmes doesn't know some very elementary shit and uh, and one day uh, he inf he uh, informs Holmes that uh, Earth is uh, is ro is revolving around Sun, and Holmes said, "Oh, that's oh, that's that's cute." And now that you have told me that, I will I will do my best to forget it. Forget it? Why? Like this? This is like this is this is good knowledge. Yes, but it is taking up his uh, his brain capacity, which he he needs to use for something else. <laughs> so, uh, let's say if the scribes. Uh, or the data jockeys are all about retrieving information then uh, they might run into a bit of uh, Johnny Mnemonic situation that they need to take in and store and also maybe remember certain shit which they will need to deliver and if they pick up too much other uh, information on the way uh, that will interfere interfere with their main mission. Uh, here, let me let me add a layer to the scribe's uh, profession. What if? <laughs> so this is some in-depth world building ahead. <laughs> so what if, in addition to all the uh, electronical quantum uh, technological storage, do that? What if atop all of that? The scribes were also trained to memorize certain things as a as a contingency. So if uh, if they're sent out to retrieve certain data, they will also have to be able to decode it, or may maybe they they will they will represent the information in such a way that they will able to quote unquote read it in or like mem memorize whatever form that that stuff is in maybe it's maybe it's in letters maybe it's in uh, uh, in a pattern maybe it's uh, it's a poem so basically some some form of very low tech very analog memorization that will ensure that even when their technology uh, fails they will still be able to uh, deliver the crucial bit of information and this means if you use too much of your senses and too much of your attention to gobble up uh, side information you won't you won't have that attention span or that brain capacity when it comes to memorizing the data that you will have to hmm. Hmm. how about that <laughs> <laughs> And uh, as a more general principle, I would call this the uh, low-tech backup. This could become a trope. <laughs> so it's like even even in the far quantum handwave future, when you have uh, when you have all the all the awesome nanotechnology and do that, uh, you 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 will uh, you will have. And it will be very important to have the sort of crude analog human methods of doing stuff when all the advanced shit fails. <laughs> it's the it's the internet versus paper book thing. Like mm -hmm. it's it's awesome to have all this knowledge at your fingertips, 
but uh, when the power goes out it is still great if you have a paper dictionary to check something up yeah or or if or even better if you have certain thing me things memorized <laughs> like that low tech backup mm -hmm. Tro trope potential infinite <laughs> <laughs> This makes the scribe characters a lot more interesting. Mm -hmm. Like it gives them a whole history, training, background sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It's all very. It sounds all very disciplined as well. Like yeah, you have to be and uh, and this adds another sort of specialist guild into the into the universe. Like you have the enforcer types who do their thing. You have the medical types who do their thing. Uh, and very, very often the professions or the uh, or the different vocational groups uh, congregate in cult-like practices. And now you have the uh, data people, hmm. the information procurement. <laughs> and I guess there's a lot of overlap as well. Like data mm -hmm. procurement helps the, like for example, the mm -hmm. seekers. And when the seekers go out and act on this and get beat mm -hmm. up, the medical cast or the medical clan mm -hmm. guilds yeah. put them back together again. So, yeah. yeah. And it actually occurs to me that the low tech backup thing, uh, the thing that right now I described the memorization part. Mm -hmm. I didn't even think of. Uh, I didn't think of it uh, myself. I just realized that uh, Atomic Rockets discussed a similar thing not too long ago when it comes to storing data. So, okay, when you retrieve data, you need to rely on memorization, but for storing data, when all, el when all else fails, you will have the uh, humble minstrel singing a song. <laughs> And I, I will af afterwards. I will I will give you a link. I will show you the. Uh, uh, there was there was this very interesting discussion about uh, how to perpetuate the uh, knowledge about uh, hazardous waste or nuclear waste sites, because uh, the half life of uh, I don't remember what it was. Let's say uranium. The half life of it is so is so long that by the time uh, that the people who would still know what this place is about uh, or like it it is very likely that uh, that the people who know what the hazard is hazard is about have died off long ago. Uh, while the while the site is still hazardous, so it's like the the hazard outlives the the knowledge, and and the challenge was how to uh, how to find a method that will carry that knowledge on, mm. and uh, and there there were some some clever solutions which uh, which included uh, genetic modifications and uh, and folk songs. <laughs> 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 Two wildly different ends of the scale, I feel. Oh, they were they 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 were they were linked. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was a whole basically there was a whole sort of uh, storytelling aspect to it and and sort of perpetuating a thing via mixing some very high tech things and and low tech things. But the but the point that I have apparently taken away from that is mm -hmm. that you you should have a a low tech backup. Mm -hmm. to to your high tech uh, solutions where were we i'm just writing down a quick note here all right cool uh they reached a door where where are we now page 4 of 8 near the top Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, I wouldn't even read it aloud because I can already see certain things that don't add up here. So for example, one question to address here is uh, how to... Phone. 
uh, is how to uh, describe time passing and it could be that, si that 16 says I have no idea but I have slept in slept three times in that time you know so again using humans as interface or more like I have no idea but I have had the, the, the sleeps uh, since And and uh, so basically, they their goal is to move farther into the uh, farther into the facility to reach the data interface. I wouldn't call it computer. I would think that the computer is is bigger and the com like the computational functions are distributed all over the place. But mm -hmm. you do need a data access point somewhere. Like a, a place to interface with it. Mm -hmm. And and again, there's a lot of there's a lot to do with the uh, uh, there's a lot to do with the what's happening here and the experiments here. Okay, this gets me thinking. Uh, if this place, uh, so if if what's what's happened to Baima is linked to what's happened in this place, and Scribe is focused on what's happened uh, on Baima, then. Since he already, since he so he already knows to come here for the info, uh, he probably still should be somewhat interested what happened here, or like, or more like uh, he might suspect that this is this is uh, connected, and he's like, let me check the let me check uh, let me check the data, and uh, if it is connected, then I will spare some of my mental capacity to examine what's here. I don't know. Uh, I'm I I have I have run into contradicting viewpoints here. <laughs> I like the idea that if he deems it necessary, he will mm -hmm. expend brain capacity. Yeah, so it's like uh, he might suspect that these things are things are linked at this point, but he will restrain his speculations until he knows for sure. And and when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, all the uh, gore and viscera around the place. I would think that he should be able to distance him, distance himself from all that. So it's like, ah, oh, okay, bodies, moving on. <laughs> mm. And here's the idea. What if sixteen uh, will uh, will keep on blabbering about what's what's happened because. For him, this is this might be important, and for him, this might be uh, recreating the events might be a sort of a way to grasp uh, uh, grasp some information, and so so he will just spill the beans voluntarily about some shit. Meanwhile, the scribe will request will make requests that uh, that uh, he shouldn't talk so much because uh, his memory is is limited. Much memory. Yoink. Done. And uh, this would lead to the point where they. Uh, okay, re reversing a little bit. So while they are moving through the facility, the only information that is relevant to the scribe is. Uh, is whether they are in immediate danger. So he's like he's scanning the the surroundings, looking for danger, no danger, moving on. 
and and what and I'm thinking that once they get to the data interface point which uh, the scribe would have to hack open with his uh, specialized tools and doodads and whatever mm -hmm. uh, once they get to there and and he has access the data and memorized the data and and is now noticing that aha uh -huh, this place is not uh, uh, or like this, this mayhem here is not just random mayhem, but it is directly linked to that thing, to that other thing. Then he will uh, he will suddenly get very interested in everything. So it's like on the way in, he's like, yeah, yeah, please stop talking. I can't remember <laughs> this. <laughs> and and on his and and once he has linked to the data, then he's like, hmm, yes, tell me everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I I love the idea that he's got limited memory, and that uh, certain stuff is like on the way in. He's like, all right, I'm gonna have to save some memory to like low tech back everything up. But then once he's got that yeah, connection, yeah, yeah. So it's uh, I wouldn't even I wouldn't even say that it's directly like memory, but it's more like his capacity to process process the info in such a way that he can remember or like th that he knows that he can remember and retrieve so it's it's not like downloading shit into your brain and uh, and uploading it afterwards it's more like working through it learning right. yeah cool <laughs> Where do you want me to go from? Uh, when do they get to the actual interface? Or computers? Du -du -du -du. Taking this as his cue, 16 led them through the carnage to the end of the corridor. It opened to a large dome, closed in with a smaller dome at the center. Inside that, a circle of computers and consoles. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the the paragraph proceeding says, "Scribe looked around, awestruck." One of your favourites. <laughs> <laughs> I I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So everything between moving be, between starting to move through the uh, facility and reaching to the data access point is subject to heavy revision and probably uh, probably trimming and now it isn't until scribe jab the screen triumphantly that they start actually digging through it because he starts mm. his transfer to codex and then he's like, right, let's try and find out who you are. Okay, so basically any personal questions and any questions about the uh, the facility, we will, we will have to, uh, when we look through this, this, this and the above, uh, we will have to divide it in two. Well, a lot of it will still be thrown out, but, but the stuff that stays uh, we, we we shall split in split it in two, so one is the stuff that sixteen just, just blabbers on his on his own, and mm -hmm. the other is the stuff that scribe will become interested in and will ask about. And even then, we will have to make choices, uh, what uh, what he will actually ask about and what what will be relevant. Yeah, so this next paragraph, Scribe finds out, finds out 16's name. Uh, Scribe says his name, and then he has, and then 16 has a, a Corey style seizure slash flashback to something, and he ends up on the ground. Um, and Scribe's like, "Hey, are you okay?" And 16's like, "Does it fucking look like it? you know, like he's." <laughs> mm -hmm dumb question get a dumb answer um, and then that's when the doctor turns up oh okay so this is the stuff that we will have to find uh, we will have to change all yeah. together uh, well 
if uh, let me think so on one hand it would be good to have a server connection because that is his, his research after all mm -hmm. then again what if uh, this was not uh, there was an actual other person or presence here but it wasn't any physical servo or or his clone or whatever but it would be his consciousness in the system so he okay. would so the ai would be based on servo himself so in a way the facility would have been run uh, automatically by the computerized servo and there would be and there would be many many more facilities like this peppered all over uh, all over the uh, uh, the nova space and elsewhere where mm -hmm. the where the uh, uh, digital servos are running the research facilities yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love this because it actually roams back into old thinking where when Corey does his final battle against Servo, he has to send Risto and Chase and all these other people out to different facilities mm. to to make sure they get every last trace of Servo. They can't they don't just they can't just blow up the one place because his consciousness lives on or he, or he's done something, you know, one of his clones is activated or something like that. But it, it's very reminiscent of that old thinking, and I mm. quite, I can get behind this. This is good. Digital servos is uh, <laughs> a, wonderful, a wonderful word. And, uh, yeah, it is explained in this story, uh, uh, I think, previously, that there was an AI running this facility as well. So that's not a massive leap mm -hmm. for me to make. Yeah, so the AI was running the facility... And the AI seems to be gone, but actually it has just gone to hiding. And now it's like, mwah! <laughs> <laughs> this was another problem with this story. Uh, Servo actually turns up in person mm -hmm. to collect 16. And I don't think he'd do that. I think he'd just send... Uh, th this is entirely for dramatic effect. And mm. it's only dramatic effect for me because I know who Servo is. Nobody mm. know, Nobody outside this story knows who Servo is. So, well, uh, you and Keo, but you know mm. what I mean. Like, the reader's not mm. going to... So... Uh... Further on... Uh... In, in a throwaway line of dialogue, 16 could say, Oh, yeah, this place was was, show, uh, was ran by an, by an advanced AI. Seems to have gone to hiding now. We only know it as the Doctor. Ooh. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Although I would probably say we only knew him as the Doctor. I think uh, the pronouns with the AI and the loveless minds need some thinking because if if it's a sentient entity then I refuse to call them it. Mhm. Mm I think is was this not something that the loveless AIs select like avatars or they choose their own avatars? And the crew, like, wasn't it an interface? Yeah, yeah. Thing? Like, if it's uh, like if it if it's a human-like avatar who is uh, uh, who is explicitly one or another sex, then uh, then it's easy. Mm -hmm. But if it's more ambiguous, or like when it's when it's not specified, or it is maybe a composite AI or multiple AIs. Uh, then uh, they could say it's them. So to to acknowledge that it's a person, but not uh, 
not uh, tying it to uh, to a specific sex. Yeah. Whew. It's a lot to consider. Yeah. So like we we probably can't just hand wave past it because in this case if the AI is based on servo <coughs> and probably uh, probably displays some sort of uh, servo looking avatar and servo is uh, quite ambiguous unamb unambiguously a male then mm -hmm. again this this question is solved here yeah pretty happy with that in this particular instance yeah it's a case by case basis i think this mm -hmm. one um okay so d just quickly to wrap this up servo turns up with a squad and they shoot 16 in the chest with something that doesn't cause him to bleed, but it does cause him to hit the floor and incapacitated. Um, and Servo and, and the, the soldier team grab 16, bundle him away, and Scribe is all with his hands up. He's like, I'm a neutral party in this. Don't, don't kill me, bro. You know, and, uh, Servo, and uh, Scribe says, since you only want him, am I all right to go? And Servo says something to the effect of, you you can, but don't you want to wait for all this data to finish transferring? Or don't you want to make sure you get everything? It's like Servo is playing with him, basically. He's he's playing head games with him. And Scribe's like, well, why do you want me to take it? And they have a bit of a back and forth. Uh, and then Servo leaves, and Scribe gets the data and leaves, and... Scribe's now got all these massively conflicting thoughts like should he have helped 16, uh, mm. what's going on with this facility, blah blah blah, and then they leave, he leaves in Codex, and end of story, roll credits. Okay, this is not a very strong ending. Okay. <laughs> Here's how I would roll it. So, point one, since uh, the doctor is now uh, confirmed is the AI, mm -hmm. Leave the squad out of it. No, okay. no, no new characters. Let's keep it between these two and then three. Then, since since he is the AI running the facility, he could just kick in some sort of failsafe do that that uh, uh, that interacts with 16's thing and and uh, some capsule descends from from the walls or some drone comes and packs him up. So all, all that can be done with technology. And uh, here comes the thing where we can tie it together with the bigger arc is that uh, when Scribe is getting his data uh, the, the doctor as in the AI, uh, theoretically should be killing him as well. So let's say the scribe is like looking, looking around and like uh, his hands up and and more like, why why am I still alive or something like that, mm. uh, or like why 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 aren't you killing me, and and the AI could be like. Let, let's say if there, I don't know how the AI represents. Is there is there a shit on the screen? Uh, is there just the voice? I don't know. Anyway, whatever the representation is, it's it's sort of it's it's glitching or there's some there's some sort of some representation of distress and the uh, and the doctor should say something like. Oh, believe me, I am trying, but something <laughs> in my core coding uh, doesn't let me. It appears somebody out there wants, really wants you to get this data out. So this is, and this, this would be the hint of the prime servo on one hand letting the evil to happen, but on the other hand uh, letting the events uh, to go into motion. I love this. The AI. Oh, believe me, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I am trying, my good sir.
Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, my yeah, and long silences. Yeah, and uh, what exactly happens next? Uh, maybe we can we can leave that uh, for another session. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, may maybe there is another craft taking off, maybe not, uh, or or maybe it's maybe it's just so that uh, uh, the doctor is like, oh, believe me, I am trying, mm -hmm. but something in my core core coding uh, tells me I'm not supposed to, and uh, and scribe could uh, could act interested and or or like he he could he gets intrigued and like where where what <laughs> you're saying what now and uh and the do and the doctor should be like glitchy voice and and shit like oh yeah apparently you are supposed to take the data and and uh retrieve the data and take it to blah 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 whatever mm -hmm. and uh and I am uh, I am to uh, withdraw all my weapons uh, until you are safely you have safely taken off, but the specimen stays. So basically, yeah, uh, let's do it so that uh, sixteen won't be transported anywhere. He will be just carted in or like back back to the box. Mm-hmm. So, so basically, the the command that the AI uh, that has overridden the AI is to let the scribe take the data and take off, but the, but the specimen stays. Mm-hmm. Bam. Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> data, but the specimen stays. I already don't like this AI. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and when it comes to everything that the scribe sees in the facility and what uh, what we can and cannot commit to his memory, oh, it could be that uh, at this point he's intrigued and he wants to commit this to memory. But uh, the AI will, uh, uh, I don't know, <laughs> think, think of, uh, think of uh, loud interference for his speakers and flickering lights that disrupts his, uh, his, his thinking. It's like, no peeking! <laughs> I'm to, uh, I've, I've, I've been commanded to allow you to take off safely, but you are not to... Uh, you are not to blabber, or I don't know, like some some sort of uh, some sort of nasty little twist that uh, that the scribe can only well he he can only remember as much as a normal human would, but he can't use his uh, scribe skill on the uh, on the surroundings. No, oh, no peeking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no peeking, no telling. <laughs> Failed the failed the fortitude check, <laughs> basically. Yeah, that's cool. And then this story ends, and then Mirror's Legion begins with him investigating another station, and that's where Mirror's Legion turn up, and it's another abandoned station. Uh, Mirror's Legion turn up, and he shows them this data that he got from here, and that convinces them. Ultimately, it takes a bit, a little while, but ultimately. Scribe convinces the Legion to help him hmm. and they go and deal with all this together. At which point they then link up with Cal Devaza and all together they have a massive discussion and blah blah blah. But that is way in the future. Yeah. We don't even The story hook for Mirror's Legion doesn't sound very strong to me. Okay. <laughs> so uh, the part where the scribes scribes path crosses with Mirrors that's okay, but exactly how it happens, I would put it up for discussion. So it's like it could be that he has delivered his data on this thing and he has decided to keep some of it and investigate on his own. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and then he runs into them but i think the run somebody runs into somebody and they decide to work together can only f stretch so far so it could be that maybe he's right off the bat he is uh trying to hire an enforcement team to go mm. with him because it's a dangerous place he does speculate that he's like when I when I got back to Gatlin, I was going to hire you guys to help me with something. So he, he did know about them, but no, yeah, you're right. He should hire them prior to leaving for the second station. Mm -hmm. They they could uh, set up rendezvous in there, mm. so there could still be the meeting point. Like, who are you? You hired me. You should know. <laughs> But yes, I, I think uh, as for this story, we have enough to go on for now. Mm -hmm. So we are not going to uh, tackle the text today. We have uh, we have achieved a solid outline, and that mm -hmm. is already an achievement in itself. So I shall wrap up this recording. Yep. Bank it. Bank it.